You know when you've got that player who's been in your club for 10, 15 years, he's played 500 games, he's club captain, and you love him a little bit more than you probably should, let's be honest. And then that dreaded day comes, he steps into the office, gaffer, I'm retiring. I can't walk, my hips are gone, my knees are gone, and you're heartbroken. Absolutely gutted. But there's a way to make sure your players become staff members and you can start doing it whilst they're players. And you can actually make them very good staff members and affect their potential ability as they're coming through. And today I'm going to show you how. And to test this out, we're going to do it with none other than Phil Jones. Now, one thing that will stand out immediately, Phil is no longer with Manchester United. He's gone to Rangers. We are technically rebuilding Phil Jones here. Before I show you the tips and techniques to ensure that Phil becomes a very good staff member in the future, we're just going to sim a couple of years until he retires just to show how his career would go without us getting involved. So let's do that first of all. Oh, for God's sake, I send him to Scotland hoping he would do well. So Phil Jones has retired from football, is now a coach, and he's in the year 2024. He had two seasons at Rangers, which were both very mediocre indeed, playing 11 games in each season and not really doing much at all, to be fair. Take a look at him as a coach. He is pretty terrible, isn't he? I can see why he's unemployed, and he will remain unemployed for the foreseeable future. And we do have the editor on for this process, so let's take a look at his potential ability and his current ability. Honestly, mate, that is terrible. 63 potential. He's currently at 34. That is not good. We're going to change that by going back two years in game, not in the real life. And I'll show you what you can do with your players and how you can create brilliant staff players. So let's go. It should be noted that with staff, it's exactly the same as players. They'll have a potential ability and a current ability. With staff, it is a great variable because you don't know exactly what they're going to get until they retire. So I could play this 10 times and Phil Jones will get the different potential ability, a different one every single time. But for this method that I will show you, we'll increase that by some distance. So let's start off at the beginning. We're back in Rangers and Phil has not kicked the ball yet. We've gone back to the start and here he is. And there's a nice way in the player profile picture to start developing Phil into a world class coach, assistant manager, whatever you want it to be, we can, to some degree, control that. So let's start off with overview. There's two areas here. When they come to the latter years of their playing career from 30 onwards, you'll see send on coaching course. Leadership courses are there all the way through. And these two will affect their determination, their leadership skills, some of their hidden attributes, and the coaching course will, of course, give them the national CBA, continental, all the way up to pro. So we're going to suggest both of those, and I'll show you what that that results in just now. Okay, a day has passed in game and Phil has been granted both wishes. He's on a leadership course, which takes three months and a coaching course, which takes four months. So in effect, every four months, set a reminder in your notes in your calendar. It will obviously tell you, but if you do miss it, it's very important. You want to keep on top of this one. Phil will get his national C in four months time and that will copy and paste for all the national licenses. When you get to continental, it takes a little bit longer and I'll show you that in a second. So that is the first part to make Phil a good staff member. Next up, back into the profile page, discuss. We're going to go into advice and recommend a possible future staff role. Now, bear in mind, I've just joined this club. Me and Phil, we don't know each other. He doesn't trust me. I've come in and said, mate, leadership course, go on, crack on. Coaching course, you can do it. And now I'm pulling him in and telling him exactly what I think he should be. So let's put the arm around Big Phil. And I don't want him to be a coach. He was a terrible coach. He's got leadership skills. I want him to be my assistant manager. So we'll select that. And as you can see, it's not exactly a favorable response. And this would be the, the reality for most of the players that don't know you. If there's a player with a good relationship, they will listen to every word you say. And I'll show you as we go further along into his career, how this message changes. So Phil is telling me, sorry, Gaff, I want to be a manager. I want your job. Well, no, you're the Gareth Keenan and I'm the David Brent. So let's end that quick chat and let's move on to the next stage. So those two parts are the back office type of things. Every four months, we're going to do that, okay? We're going to add the leadership, the coaching course, and discuss with him about his potential role. Now, the next bit is super, super important. You want to prolong the career of this individual. If they were to retire now with the National C, they're going to be crap, okay? You want to get them up to Continental A, Continental Pro, 
so they're decent. So for Big Phil, he retired after two mediocre seasons previously. We're now going to work on prolonging his career. And the easiest way to do that, okay, is set up a tactic that nullifies any sprinting. He's old. We're not going to do too much with the boy. And intensity for everything is half. We're going to drop it right down. And that will allow him to work at a manageable level. In terms of history, in terms of injuries, this boy's had a lot, hasn't he? And this is something I'm going to monitor for the next couple of years to see how many injuries he gets while we put him on this half intensity training course next up is the tactic we put him into so in front are the options available to fill to be on that pitch no nonsense we're not going to touch that one for now we could put him in a back three in the center with a wide center backs either side of him and that would be a nice one to be fair to occupy the players but with a back four simply a central defender on defend rather than the ball playing and with that then we're going to edit some of his roles so dribble less shoot less off and take fewer risks shorter parts in and we're not going to trigger a press that often i want him just to chill back there i don't want to see him sprinting around the pitch relax mate pass is shorter certainly and depending where the player is in the pitch for you for example you want to make sure especially if they've not got stamina you want to nurture them through the season don't play them too often because quite simply they won't be able to cope and they'll retire too early and you'll end up with a crap staff member so let's get to the end of the first season let's see how he's developed as a staff member see what badges he's got and see how this first season has gone and big phil's first season is in the bag and he's had an absolute blinder one thing i did add which i forgot to mention i put him on penalties i just thought if he's enjoying his football and scoring goals he's likely to stay a lot longer in the game so last season he got bloody 15 goals in all competitions big phil if he's on a goal scoring bonus he's laughing but more importantly if we come over to information we can find out exactly what his license currently is and it's a national a license so we've reached the end of that after one season consider Considering in the previous sim, he retired after two seasons with no badges, we've already improved this an awful lot. He's still on the half intensity, and what I've done this time, I've added endurance training. So I want to improve this boy's stamina, because if he can get fitter, it will once again prolong his career. As you can see if you hover over it, this attribute reflects a player's ability to endure a high level physical activity for extended periods of time. And I want Phil to be a machine. There's Latan, 40 years old, sprint, well, you know, he doesn't sprint, he just kicks but you get the point and if we look at his injuries what's he had three days out let's be honest for phil jones that is exceptional after 17 months of not playing he's bruised his ankle and he's had three days out and aside from that he's played every single game wow well done phil okay let's get into season two to see how he's progressed in his coaching career so i simmed the second season then i simmed the third season and then i simmed a fourth season we dragged phil jones's career for four years considering he's got hobnobs for knees this boy has had an exceptional exceptional time in Scotland. Let's take a look. Proof of the pudding that if Phil Jones goes to Scotland, he will become king. Four seasons after that first one with 15 goals, he had another brilliant one with 12 goals, seven goals, started to climb a bit, but got 10 goals in the end after four very good seasons. He started to drop off a little bit and all the way throughout, we've trained Phil up with his coaching badges and he now sees himself with a continental A license and he retired with us as he was studying for the pro license. So I feel as though I've done my bit for him and he is gonna go on and become an exceptional member of staff. Although, and this is the beauty of Simon in Football Manager, his profile isn't brilliant. On the surface, when you look at it, you think, oh, to be fair, as an assistant manager, Two is for ability, two is for potential, that's not great, is it? But if you remember what his current and potential ability was before we did anything, it's improved an awful lot. Let's go to staff details. He's got a 33 where he had a 36, I think it was. We'll get the numbers on screen now. But his potential ability has risen to 110, which is incredible. That's practically doubled because of what we've done and how we developed in so far. So let's click on OK. This formation has changed. Everything's changed, to be fair, in terms of this. It is randomized, and that's what happens with staff members. But in essence, we've created a staff role that we needed, as opposed to Phil being a coach. And now we've doubled his potential ability. So over time, with a job, he will become half decent. And these do shoot up, to be fair, with staff members. But the whole reason we've done this is so that we get those wonderful players that we love and we keep hold of them for as long as possible on the pitch, train them up and bring them in the staff roles that we actually need. All that's left to do now is sign him up as my assistant manager. If he says no, I'm going to cry. Suggest terms. £7,000, Jesus Christ, mate. You're not playing football anymore. 
but there he is. We'll bring him in as assistant manager and take over the world. So there you have it, a simple tutorial to prolong the careers of your players as they get older. A little few snippets in there, but mainly for those three areas to get them ready to be the best staff member possible. Leadership, coaching badges, have a conversation to lead them down the path that you want them to go down and nurture them through the seasons and the training to prolong their career until they've got the Continental Pro. As soon as they got that, you chuck them on it for 90 minutes and make them as a wing back, sprinting up and down. You can do what you want. But hopefully you found that beneficial. If you did, comment down below. Let me know. Do you like to keep hold of these superstar players that you develop? I'm a sucker for it. My back room is like the 2000 Premier League dream team. Honestly, it's just all the superstars I love keeping hold of. And if you did enjoy today's video, check this one out next. You will love it and I'll catch you very soon. Take care.